the new no-code tutorial for NoCoHQ. And today's tutorial, I wanna give you a quick overview of using custom CSS code within your Bubble application, the various different ways of how you can achieve this. So uh, what is CSS? Well, if you don't know what CSS is, I would recommend to read up about it. But basically, it's a way um, to style uh, elements on HTML um, or HTML elements on websites. Um, and usually what you do in Bubble, if you build something, um, you define the style either directly within um, the element inspector of an element or you create a new style, basically. But um, there might be some use cases where you want to add custom styles. If you're building custom elements using custom HTML or you want to modify things, um, and we're just going to give you a quick overview of how you can uh, do this basically. So first of all, um, you usually add a CSS or custom CSS using style uh, or style sheets. Um, and you can do this by going here on, if you're on a certain page, for example, here, you can go ahead and click on the page itself, go to the page HTML, HTML header, and then basically just add your custom um, um, style here so you open the style bracket okay you close the style bracket and then in between you add whatever custom css you want um, important to note here is that if you add some code here in this header this will only be applied to our page uh, in this case test okay and not to all other pages if you want to add code to all pages you want to go to settings what you want to do is you want to add code here. So you want to add script meta tags in the header. And then if you apply script uh, or styles here, it will be um, uh, applied to every single page within your bubble application. So let's actually go ahead now and add some custom CSS and um, just show you a real life or real um, use case of this. So I found this great website here called magicpattern.design, which allows you to generate and then copy the code for CSS background patterns. So these backgrounds you see here, which are quite nice, you can configure them. Um, they are completely made just using CSS, so it's not an image. And let's say you wanna have a nice background um, for your bubble app using one of these um, designs. So let's maybe go with, I don't know, uh, let's choose the color and opacity here, spacing like this. All right, let's maybe choose, let's choose this, this is quite um, special. We can preview it as well. Or let's preview a few. Yeah, let's choose this one. I like this one. So I'm going to copy the CSS code here. I'm going to go back to my application here, open the page element inspector, and we're just going to paste the CSS code here between our style tags. And you can see already here lots of different um, style properties. So the background color, opacity, the background itself made up of gradients, and so on and so forth. But now, obviously, the question is so where should this be applied to? Okay, and there's lots of different things you can define here now. So you could say, all right, um, should be applied to um, specific inputs, should be applied to specific classes, to specific element IDs, and so on and so forth. You can read up uh, more about that um, on various different websites, just uh, read about, up about CSS. Uh, but we're gonna define a, a custom or a, a specific ID, an element ID where this CSS should be applied. So for example, to add um, an ID here, I'm gonna add a hashtag, and then let's call it BG pattern, for example, okay? I'm gonna open curly brackets here, and I'm then gonna close them afterwards here, okay? So, now you can see, all right, um, we're defining here, basically, that all elements with the ID BG pattern, okay, should be applied these, this custom CSS, basically. Okay, so now you're gonna ask yourself, okay, how can I apply the element ID? Well, quite simple, you head over to settings, general, and you wanna expose the option to add an ID attribute to HTML elements. So now what you can do is you can, for example, take a group here, a simple bubble group, drag that onto your page, okay? Uh, maybe let's like that full screen, all right, like this. And then double click on that and then scroll down to ID attribute. And we're just gonna apply our ID attribute BG pattern here now. And if I preview this page now, let's take a look at that. We should have, yep, awesome. We have this beautiful CSS um, uh, background pattern. Let's actually not apply a maximum width, okay? That will look even nicer. Um, but you can see we have our standard bubble group and in the bubble editor it doesn't show anything. But then if our page loads, we have this beautiful CSS pattern here in the background. Um, we could even make the group a bit 
bigger maybe like this okay and um, the great thing about css patterns is that they don't really have a resolution so you can even uh, zoom in and you can see the resolution will never um, uh, yeah decrease basically um, because it's not an image okay um, and yeah so basically we applied a custom css and then said okay it uh, should be applied to all groups or all elements with the element id bg pattern just to show you now let's maybe uh, add a second group next to it let's have this on top okay like this just for demo purposes um all right um and let's say okay we want to use another pattern let's want to use i don't know this one here maybe a different color like this S code okay head back and now we're gonna just do the same thing we're gonna add a second piece of um, um, styling so underneath this here where the curly brackets close we're gonna add maybe I don't know uh, BG pattern 2 again open curly brackets close curly brackets and then add the CSS code we copied here okay and now we're gonna apply our BG pattern 2 to our second group here below just to show you for demoing purposes that you can add uh, lots of different CSS code and this will be applied then to all the elements you basically specify. So um, yeah, lots of different options you have here. And one last thing I wanna show you. So uh, what we did here again, we added some um, custom, um, yeah, basically HTML here. Um, you could of course also maybe if you, you add really custom HTML yourself, so you build something in HTML and you say, I don't know, this is, um, this is our div with a class name of tests, okay, uh, whatever, like this, okay, and it contains the text, hello world. Just an example, but you would wanna maybe build something real with um, HTML, some real functionality. And now again, we can add some custom styling, so we can, let's remove our first style here, okay. We're gonna change this to um, not hashtag, but dot test, that means our class, all classes with the name test, okay should be applied these, um, um, yeah, these styling, or let's actually, um, yeah, with these styling. So let's remove all of this. Let's just have the background color. And now if we preview this again, uh, we have here our div with the class. And you can see, all right, okay, our div here has this um, weird looking background color. Um, not very beautiful, but you understand um, the functionality behind it. We basically added custom styling here, applied it to the whole page. And now if you would add another div somewhere else, you don't have to define it the same second time again. You just have the second div here. Um, and for this div, because it's the same class and we defined all classes should have this background color, all classes with the class name test. Um, if we have a second div now, it will also have this um, weird background color. here. So various different ways you could use CSS. Um, and just to summarize, maybe again, you can add custom CSS, custom styling to the page HTML header or to the settings um, SEO meta tags where it will be applied to all pages and then use it within custom um, HTML elements or apply it to uh, already existing bubble elements such as a group and then apply custom CSS styling. So that's basically it regarding the tutorial. Um, I hope you learned something and I'm going to see you guys for the next tutorial of NoCoHQ. Bye.